Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A4E Skyhawk and we're looking at the APC, Automatic Power Compensator, or as I like to call it, the Auto Throttle. I've just discovered this plane has this and I just keep loving this plane more and more. Now it's got Auto Throttle, it's friggin' awesome. So what it does is it takes control, the computer takes control of the throttle, so we go completely hands off throttle and it will keep you at the landing angle of attack, which is about 8 degrees, 8 degrees in the Hornet, 8 degrees in the, uh, in the Skyhawk as well and it will control your throttle all the way down from when you engage the system all the way until touchdown and as soon as you've got weight on wheels it'll switch itself off. So what we can do is we can turn the system off as, as soon as we've got in a landing circuit, either naval or airfield based, and as soon as we've got the plane dirty, so we've got the wheels down, we've got the flaps down, we've got the spoilers on, and we're down to speed, then we can turn the APC on and it will do all the throttle controls from then on. You can see we've got the AOA shown at the bottom here, so it's going to keep us about 8 degrees, or it's between 7.5 and, and 8 degrees I think it is for this and the Hornet. And we're also going to have our AOA indexer here that we'll see, and it's going to keep us, um, well in fact I'll show you that as we get going. So the first thing I'm going to do, gear down, flaps all the way to the down position, spoilers armed. Uh, we're ready to switch over now, so to turn the system on, in fact we should have to look at the controls first, uh, let me just move that out of the way, there he is, it's quite difficult to get to, you have to kind of lean in front of the stick here. Off, standby and engage, off is off, standby is warm up and you have to warm up for 15 seconds before you can enge uh, engage and engage is turned on. We also have a temperature control here, hot, standard, cold. You need to tell the computer how hot it is outside, it doesn't know. If it's above 20 degrees metric Celsius, then you need to ambient, then you need to tell it's hot. If it's between 5 and 27, then standard. If it's below 5 degrees, you need to tell it it's cold. This allows it to compensate for the weather and make sure that it gets the throttle consistent with that. So today it is 20 degrees, so we're just going to leave it on standard. So first of all, we're going to turn on standby. And what we can see is that we've now got APC here next to our angle of attack indexer. Our angle of attack indexer is here. If we are on landing angle of attack of 8 degrees or so, then a circle will appear here. If we are below our required angle of attack, and you can see we're 6 degrees down here, this chap here will show, which means we need to slow down and increase our angle of attack. And if we get an um, opposite arrow up there, our angle of attack is too high and we're going slow. The whole reason that we, um, these naval planes have this angle of attack indexer is because for the hook to work, for the whole landing system on an aircraft carrier to work properly, you have to land at a set angle of attack. If you try and land a Hornet, anything other than 7.5 or 8 degrees or whatever it is, then the hook just doesn't work or there's a very low chance that the hook will work. So what we can do now is when we're flying is hand it over to engage, which turns the system on. Now, there are some prerequisites. First of all, the throttle has to be 70 to 100% for it to engage. If we try and engage it now with the right mouse click, you'll see that it doesn't work. It just flicks straight back because we're outside of parameters. Also, we cannot have manual control of the throttle. So I cannot be touching, moving the throttle. Uh, when I'm trying to engage this and I cannot touch or move the throttle at all while the system is engaged. If I do that it will override the system and turn it off. So it, you have to be really conscious not to touch the throttle. Even if it looks like the APC is getting it wrong, don't touch the throttle until, until you're absolutely sure that something's gone drastically wrong. Then obviously take control and power up. But otherwise just let it to do its thing. We don't have to be at the correct angle of attack to turn the system on as long as we're relatively slow in, and within sensible speed parameters like we are now then it's going to turn on so we're going to unpause I'm just going to level myself just to make sure I don't get myself in trouble okay we're going to switch over now what we're going to do is ramp up the full throttle just quickly and right click and you can see it's now taking control so I've right clicked and it's engaged itself now if I right clicked and the switch kind of went forward and then came straight back it's because we're outside parameters the engine hadn't spooled up quite right or it wasn't warmed up yet but because we're in parameters it's now engaged so now we're just going to leave it and we're not going to touch the throttle again what we're going to do is observe that the throttle is moving itself now well not this particular moment but it will be moving itself in a minute there we go see that's not me moving the throttle and this is really weird it takes a, lot, a little while to get used to the fact that it's going to control the throttle so it's going to control the speed it's going to control the angle of attack it will compensate for any stores you've got on their fuel amounts and stuff like that so all I've got to do now is left and right roll in the stick and the elevator control. Now elevator control is important to keep it really smooth. If you do any kind of jiggity noobish up and down elevator move movements you'll fool this system and you'll 
it won't turn itself off, but it will it'll have trouble keeping up with your stick movements. You'll end up getting yourself in a PIO, a pilot-induced oscillation, and it'll all go pear-shaped. So just keep it. What I suggest is that for elevator, just use the elevator trim. Don't use the elevator stick at all. If you can do that, it just keeps everything super smooth, and it ensures the APC can keep up with you. So I'm going to use left and right roll on the stick, and up and down pitch trim. And that's all I'm going to do to fly this plane now. So let's unpause, and I'm going to try and look where that runway is. I think it's over to the left somewhere so we're going to give it a go you can see it's keeping us nice on the angle of attack you can see down there we're eight degrees or something like that we'll turn in now it's going to keep us uh eight degrees it's quite a high angle of attack remember so you're going to need to point your nose up in the air quite a lot to maintain altitude keep an eye on your barometric your radar altimeter take a chance here to turn the radar altimeter off slash down because it's a pain in the butt that loop so trim up a bit more roll. You can see it's you can see it messing around with the throttle, trying to uh, compensate for my silly noobish movements. Messing around with my pitch trim. Where is that runway? Oh, there it is. Beautiful. Okay, so in we go. Okay. And this is going to be very useful for aircraft landings uh, where. We don't have a great deal of symbology. Uh, the Hornet's great for symbology for aircraft landings. All we've got in this aircraft is our AOA indexer here. And it's not that good to use. It's not as good as the E-bracket in the Hornet, obviously. It doesn't have as much resolution. Um, so this is going to be a great system for carrier landings. Uh, right, we're going to have to speed up that roll now. It can handle pretty much any amount of roll, this system. Check it's still engaged. Yep, it's all good. Oh, I've overshot because I'm a silly man. Doing my checks, gear down, flaps down, spoilers on, blah, blah, blah. Okay, rolling out. So I haven't touched the uh, stick pitch yet. I'm just using the trim. Keep my uh, bore sight position, position kind of the other end of the runway. It should be about right for the angle of attack, maybe a little bit higher. And we should be on an okay approach. And we're just going to let... We're just going to basically ram the aircraft into our end of the runway and the APC will take care of our control. Check that it's engaged. I always worry that it's disengaged itself. If it did disengage itself, it would go back to standby and say APC there. So I haven't really got any worries, but... Still, I know it's uh, not got the circle there, but it's still on alpha, as you can see. It's still 7.8 there, which is fine. A little low now, so let's pull up. So our radar altimeter, I forgot to turn all the way off. Okay. Got to just bang on alpha. Let's see if we can do a landing without bouncing for once. Uh, my mind starts going a bit funny here. I want control of the throttle. Everything is telling me I want control of that throttle. It's, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to trust the computer. Just using my trim. That's all I'm using now. And ram it into the ground, splunge, and it's turned itself off, and of course I bounce, but that's just what I do, air brake on, and just glide that down, flare that out, and that should land down, and there she goes. Uh, the APC is now turned off, we can tell because it's got the APC, it'll be switched back to standby, as soon as you get weight and wheels it turns itself off. So that's it, cool plane, really cool feature, really useful feature, really fun to use to do that. Um, just my only advice is to do the smallest, slowest movements you can with a stick to give the APC the best chance it can to keep up with your movements. Use trim instead of the elevator. I just find that's a good thing to do and just trust in the system. Cool. I hope that helps and see you later.